Hi, I'm Kyle and welcome to my channel. And if you're looking for exciting content filtered through the lens of common sense, logic, and reason, you've come to the right spot. Hit that like button, subscribe, hit the bell icon so you won't miss any future content coming out. And so today I'm going to talk to you about in my blog, Informal, a little bit about Captain Marvel, of course. What else are we going to talk about? And a little bit about identity politics and why it's so harmful. Again, with Captain Marvel, when I bring it up, I want to also say that there's real reasons why we bring this up, not just because it's a stupid movie or any, of, any movie, because it's just, relatively speaking, just a movie. But when you have something as big as Marvel, as big and as influential, influential as Marvel across the spectrum, it's going to carry over into other aspects of life, you know, everything. And so this uh, Facebook post I'm going to share with you is going to highlight that thought process of identity politics and how dangerous it can be. All right, and lastly, I'm going to talk a little bit about Marvel Endgame Infinity. I'm sorry, Marvel Endgame from the, the sequel to Infinity War. And uh, so, yeah, so let's get started. I'm going to be um, getting out of here pretty soon. I'm going to be updating content a little less frequently this weekend. Today is Thursday, March 14th. And I will be doing some traveling, so I may be in and out of hotel rooms, maybe a battlefield here and there. Who knows what's going to happen this weekend? Stay tuned and see and see what I have um, planned. I'm not going to promise anything because I don't know my schedule as of right now. But that being said, let's cut into this real quickly. All right. So the first thing I want to talk about again, I mentioned Captain Marvel, and there's an article on Forbes. A guy named Tom Mendelson, he put together a piece today saying that $550 million is what Captain America made, and thus it can afford a big second weekend drop. Now, what does that tell you? It tells me, it sounds like, that this could be a setup for, well, it didn't do so well, but it did very well the first weekend. Yesterday, if you recall, I talked about this article here from Deadline, where if you come down here, we talk, they talked about Captain Marvel will pass break even in the theatrical window by the end of the week with 750 worldwide. 750 more worldwide. Three quarters of a billion dollars. They're saying that it could break even. Now, the way it's worded, again, we could say is this is not, uh, it could be making 750 billion, I mean, million along the way. And you know, somewhere in between there, it crossed over the break even point. We know that the movie was budgeted around 150 million. And based on production budgets and so forth, at least double that is going to be the production budget. So even if you're generous and gave them, let's say, you know, $350 million, you're talking about a $400. Four hundred million dollar difference between that and the high end. That's a lot of that's a lot of money to play with. That people are suspecting that Marvel actually propped up this movie to do because the production budget is something that's set, but the but the uh, marketing budget is something totally different that's not re really reported on, and it's up to speculation because again there's stipulations in terms of what the movie makers get, what the distributors get, what the does say movie theaters and so forth what they get, and um, and so, yeah, so it is, it is what it is. But for them to say that this is a success, they don't know that. You know, unless they have the inside numbers, how much this money is actually, how much this movie is actually being spent across the board from the production and the marketing budget. So be curious to find out. And, you know, I don't really mind, you know, you know, what I'm trying to say is no one really wants this movie to, to fail. I don't want it to fail. I mentioned this many, many times before. If Captain Marvel fails, if other Marvel movies fail, if other superhero movies fail, then guess what happens? We get less superhero movies. I have hundreds, hundreds and hundreds of comic books that I, you know, read and, and where well, I read and love. And as a time in my life when I would just wished that there would be a place in this universe where I could see a Incredible Hulk on the screen, not the Lou Ferrigno one, you know, in the green paint, but a real, you know, eight foot tall Hulk. Or an Iron Man or a Spider-Man. Because remember, Spider-Man back in the day was, was just a conceptual 
thing because James Cameron was actually working on that. It was, in, it was in development hell for many, many years. And <clears throat> so we were looking forward to these things. We were looking for the, the time in the future where there would be superhero movies that actually look like superhero movies and not the stuff we got in the 70s and 80s. And so, no, we want all these movies to be successful, definitely. But we don't want them to be crap. And this is why I'm making these, these, these videos. Partially because, you know, it's, it's, it's my passion for, you know, comics and entertainment and, and that sort of thing. But the bigger issue really is, is the bleeding over into society and, and how it can affect other things that is really, really um, corrosive and it can cause like a cancer in, into our uh, fabric of a society. And I don't like it. And so until people can stand up and speak their minds and platforms like this, uh, it's probably not ever going to be really, really identified and resolved. So anyway, off that soapbox, I'm going to move on. And next topic is... The problem with identity politics. Now, I didn't know how to relabel really this, so I'm going to put it this way. But essentially, there was a discussion with a friend of mine. He lives here locally, and he mentioned something where uh, in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, there's a Confederate statue that's being taken down. I got an article here where it talks about this statue being taken down. And regardless of what your position is on that, that's not really the issue, really. The, really, the issue really is it's the comments that this guy had in response to my friend putting this article up on his Facebook page. So I actually screen printed it and redacted the stuff that is not appropriate to be on, you know, <laughs> to be public, even though it's out there public. I don't want to embarrass anybody, and I left my name, of course, unredacted. But, you know, some comments were, you know, a little bit of abrasive, so those were taken out. But for the most part, that's not what I want to talk to you about. I want to talk to you about the last thing he says, but I want to build up to that and then talk about that a little bit. So let's jump in this real quick. I'm sorry if this is not easy to read. I can't resize it very easily. So I'm just going to read off here. So at the top here, at the top here, he says, Wow, so-and-so, your friends love the Confederate statues. Maybe you should have went and stopped them. Okay, now first of all, when you say something on... A public domain like this or a public forum can you at least use proper grammar and spelling because I mean I'm anyway so he basically is, he had got the, the laughy face with the tears coming out so he's like, having a good time and and so I know what these people are trying I know what he's trying to say he knows that the person who posted this is a person who's a uh, who's, who's a conservative you know, not in your face conservative. He's just, you know, he just he's a taxpayer and he wants to, you know, he wants to, he wants a less government in his life. That's all there is. I mean, it's, n it's nothing more than that, really. But uh, so he kind of gives him a little snipe saying that his friends who are posting above here were saying that they were pissed off about this whole Confederate statue thing. Well, you don't know why people are mad about whatever. I mean, th again, this different reasons. So he's assuming that anybody who is basically against the Confederate statue is a racist. That's what, he's, that's what he's saying. If you're against the Confederate statue being moved, you're a racist. And I know that's where he's coming from. They tried this subtle stuff and tried to be slick. And when I confronted him, see what happens. So I say, and so many Democrats forgetting that it was their statues. And so essentially, you know, this guy is obviously on one side of the political fence. And I just put it right back at him. You know, okay, guys, so, you know, you want to call, you know, his, this guy's friends, or you would imply that his, this guy's friends are racist because they're against uh, the statue being coming down. But at the same time, you identify with the party who is responsible for these statues. So you can't have it both ways. So then <laughs> so another person talks, and then he comes back to me and says, Kyle Suggs, I'm confused at your response. Should I be upset they lost as a Democrat, which I have no idea what he's talking about, or happy I'm free as a person? I would debate that very strongly that you're free as a person. Everything isn't Democrat slash Republican. He does a little, um, woe is me face. Okay, so then he comes back again and says, Kyle Suggs, yeah, this politic stuff doesn't consume my entire identity like it does yours. I'm glad they lost 
and I'm glad I'm free man be, because of it. I, I'm, reading exactly, I'm reading exactly the way he's, he's writing it. I'm not rooting for the Confederate soldiers because I'm a Democrat. Black people weren't even voting then. I'm a black man first with, with a black fist. So, I mean, whatever. So then I say, basically, I quoted what he says before. I say, everything isn't Democrat Republican. That's what he said. That is only, be, that's only the case when there is no retort to a truthful counterargument to left's narratives. Otherwise, it's all about Democrat and Republican coming from the left. And all I'm trying to say here is, is that everything's about Democrat, Republican to, to, to these people. They always want to throw in your face, oh, you're Republican, you're racist. Oh, you're this, you're this. You know, they want to identify us, uh, people who think a certain way, put them into a category, and then, you know, denigrate them, and then assault them, and whatever it is, or attack them, and with, with no recourse. But when we come back and say some, something to the opposite effect, usually truthful, all of a sudden, it's a problem. And also, oh, wait, why are you picking on me? It's, it's not a Democrat Republican. He's backing off because he's, you know, it's, it's that little tactic, whatever. You know, they, they, they hit you, and when you hit them back, they have no, they have no response other than attacking you back harder, or, or denigrating you, or trying to ruin you, or try to uh, assault you, or whatever. And so, because this is in, this is because this is in a uh, on the internet, it's not nearly as bad as it would have been maybe in person and so forth. And so, but here's the last thing he says. He says, I am black first. I am a black man first. Okay. So then I say at the very bottom, and I'm a, and I am an American first. And that's the whole crux of what I'm trying to get at here. He's saying he's a black man first. I'm saying I'm an American first. Well, if I would ask him right now, if you're a black man first, what happens when, when that standard changes? What happens when someone identifies as something other than a black man, even though you're, you're black skin? What if, what if being black no longer is, is PC? What if now you're now, what if you're now um, something else other than a black person? Because that can shift. What doesn't shift is the country of origin, the flag, and so forth. That is what you are. If you, once you start identifying with a group, all of a sudden that group becomes shifty and wavy and depends on what's going on at a point in time, the next thing you know, you're going to be uh, far removed from what you thought you were years before. What happens if, if, uh, if, you know, if illegal aliens or legal immigrants, what if they start, start becoming more um, popular within this identity class politics? You can shift up this ladder of who's the most oppressed. What if, and then that's what I'm saying. So when you do that, all of a sudden you're just like a wavy, shifty, shifty sand kind of thing going on. You don't know what's going on. But if you're an American first, you identify with the country and nothing changes there. And all you need to do is just fight for the core values of that country. And then you have, then you have what you need. And so this is what identity politics gives you. This right here is a prime example happened just today of what identity politics gives you. When you identify with a race, uh, um, uh, um, whatever, a um, social class, economic class, a um, age class, a sex class, gender class, when you start identifying yourself with these certain groups, all of a sudden, it's not who you are as an individual, it's how your group is attributed to. So if your group is attributed to someone who is uh, oppressed, and you're at the top of that list, when your group is part of that group, then you're up there, you're like doing it, right? But what happens if another group is more oppressed than you are, all of a sudden you come down off that ladder, and the other group comes in. And it's, 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 nothing, it's nothing written in stone, it's fluid. And it makes no sense. It's hypocritical. It's stupid and unnecessary. Anyway, that's that's the danger when you have uh, identity politics such as Captain Marvel being pushed down our throats. When you have something like uh, Doctor Who being uh, pushed down our throat with identity politics, with Star Trek Discovery pushing identity politics down our throats. You have Star Wars pushing identity politics down our throats. You have that Ghostbusters pushing identity politics down our throats. There's nothing you can see on TV right now that has, does not have some sort of spin in it, which where they push. The identity politics down your throats, and then they wonder why people don't want to watch it. And so, that's more of a rant than I want to do, but that's my feelings. And I, I think this gentleman really needs to. Uh, I wish you, I hope he sees this and, uh, and gives me a call because I would like to talk to him more and maybe bring him on the show and maybe even uh, find out what his clarification was, which is why I took this time to redact everything because I don't want to uh, misrepresent uh, him or what his thoughts were. So, anyway, so that's that. The last thing is Infinity War, Endgame. So why do you say Infinity War? Avengers, Endgame. 
So I took the liberty of watching this and I made a, yeah, I made a reaction video. And that's a screenshot from it. It wasn't really good. This green screen was coming through and it's turning my, my yellow into tan there and beige. That's not bad, but it was what I liked. And uh, it just seemed corny. But if you want me to post it, I'll post it, but I'm not really thrilled about it. But my point is, I watched this thing and I just knew all along from what Marvel was doing with Captain Marvel that at some point in time they were going to launch this tra launch this trailer and put Captain Marvel at the center spot as to number one push uh, the trailer in case the movie's doing well and secondly <laughs> push Captain Marvel with this trailer if the movie isn't doing well and so that's exactly what happened so at the end of the at the end of the uh, trailer you see there's like a little um, after I mean it's like right at the end of the trailer you see Captain Marvel there and so uh, it is what it is but you know you, you can almost just, you can almost just see how Marvel is just putting this movie in the center of the two of the biggest movies in the history of this country probably the two biggest movies between well if there was a movie in between Return of the Jedi and Empire Strikes Back this would be it but unfortunately there was no movie in between there there was nothing. But if you stuck a movie in between those two movies, that would be the same thing as this. And uh, so anything from a continu continuity standpoint in between that is going to do well. And we'll just see what happens this weekend. Again, I, I was listening to um, Nerd Roddick channel, and he was pointing some things out. He dropped this uh, uh, review out there. I'll put a link out there as well about that. And he made me thinking, he had me thinking about Captain Marvel and how it's really done a lot of damage to the MCU. How Ronan the Accuser now looks totally differently. How you have Nick Fury looking totally differently. How the the patriarchy of the was the patriarchy was the enemy of the movie. And it's really sad because, you know, you you think that that uh, they would want a, a female character to stand up by herself and be able to do things um, and, and make it so that she can shine in the best in the best light. But when you make her a victim, most of the movie, it, it just to me it just takes away from her her character. It also pigeonholes her from being able to be vulnerable and to be able to be accepted and liked by the audience. And so I just think it's a, it was a mistake. So again, we'll find out in a couple of days what happens with this and. Um, Hopefully Marvel will see that it's not as successful as they were hoping for and kind of pull back the reins there, but we shall see. Okay, so with that, I'm done. That's it. I know I rambled way more than I normally do, and uh, I will not be doing a video probably not tomorrow. Maybe if I do want to be in the afternoon, and I have a few things I want to check on first. I'm trying to do some infrastructure building. And uh, we'll see about that. So if anything comes up majorly, I'll just be in my car and do something like that. Okay, so with that, I hope you all have a wonderful weekend leading into it. And I hope that you guys uh, find pleasure in all that you do. And that you stay awesome in all that you do. And I will check you next time on what I do informal. And it'll probably be probably by Sunday I will do that. Okay, so check it later and I'll talk to you then.